Chord diagrams, also known as radial network diagrams, are a form of data visualization that have become quite popular, partly because of how colorful and eye-catching they can be. They are most useful when trying to convey relationships between different entities. For example, when illustrating how often genres appear together in the IMDb Top 1000 movies, or when illustrating how often Pokemon types appear together throughout the entire Pokedex. Before working through an example ourselves, let's check out the anatomy of a chord diagram. In a chord diagram, entities are arranged radially as arcs, which you could also refer to as nodes. The size of these arcs illustrate their numerical proportions, where larger arcs indicate more prevalent entities. The relationships between these entities are visualized by chords that connect them, which you could also refer to as the links. The size of these chords illustrate the significance of the relationships, again where thicker chords indicate stronger relationships. For example, we can see that adventure and fantasy occur together in six movies. A filled curve or an empty space can be used to indicate the quantity of an entity that doesn't form part of a relationship. For example, here we can see there are 10 movies which only have a single genre of fantasy. And of course, an entity can have a relationship with many other entities. In this video, we'll focus on undirected chord diagrams where each relationship is bidirectional. That is, we'll consider a relationship between action and drama to be the same as a relationship between drama and action. This is in contrast to a directed chord diagram, where this kind of relationship would be explicitly represented. For example, when illustrating how many flights leave from one country and arrive in another in the same day. In this case, the direction of the relationship matters. We can cover directed and bipartite chord diagrams in another video. Leave a comment and subscribe if you're interested. We'll be using Plot API or Plotopy to create the many chord diagrams throughout this video. It can generate beautiful and interactive diagrams from a single line of code. These include Sankey diagrams, bar chart races, pie chart races, terminus diagrams, chord diagrams, and much more. You can get it over at plotopy.com and start using the API from any programming language. You can also install it as a Python package with pip install plotopy, which is what I'm using throughout this video. Now let's get started with our example. Here you can see a dataset which I've created especially for this video. It has the following context. 26 artists were asked to share up to two of their favorite colors. So we can see that artist one has chosen purple and pink and artist 24 has only selected lime. Let's wrangle this data into the structure required by our chord diagram, which in this case is a co-occurrence matrix. The co-occurrence matrix stores the frequency of co-occurrences between our entities, which in this case are the colors. As you can see, we've symmetrically labeled the columns and the rows with the names of our colors. Let's try filling in the values for artist one. Artist one has selected purple and pink. So we'll look along the columns until we find purple and then look downwards from that column to find the row for pink. Now that we've found the correct position, we'll set that value to one, meaning there's one co-occurrence between these colors. Because this is an undirected chord diagram and our relationships are bidirectional, we will mirror our values around the diagonal. So now we have a value of one at the position indexed by pink and purple and the position indexed by purple and pink. Let's now go through the remainder of a dataset and set all the values for the different groups of colors. 
So we'll finish off the purple and pink pairs. Next, we have the lime and green pairs. After that, the orange and lime pairs. Then, the pink and blue pairs. And then onto the purple and green pairs. Now we're moving on to the individual colours. Because these don't indicate relationships, we'll be placing them in the diagonals, starting with the oranges, and likewise with the limes. All that's left now is filling in the empty spaces with zeros. Excellent, now we have our co-occurrence matrix ready. Now onto the code. Let's store this in a list of lists in Python and pass it into Plotopy Chord along with the names of our entities. Looking good, and with Plotopy Chord, it's interactive without any extra work. Let's spot check a few relationships. We know there should be five co-occurrences between pink and purple, and we can confirm this by mousing over the chord. And we know lime should have five occurrences. Again, we'll confirm this in the same way. With that confirmed, let's have a quick look at some customizations we can make using Plotopy Chord. First, let's change the colors. Next, let's reverse the gradients of our chords. Let's curve our labels around the arcs. Let's show the numerical values of our arcs. And let's enable an intro animation for our diagram. And that's just a few of the customizations you can make with Plotopy Chord. Before ending the video, just a quick word of caution on using chord diagrams as they can quite easily become very cluttered when representing too many entities and relationships. Thanks for watching. If you're interested, feel free to like, comment and subscribe and also check out palyra.com.